Sharks are the apex predator in our oceans, and they've been in our oceans for over 400 million years. And in this 400 million years, they have developed and evolved a set of incredible super senses. Hi guys, welcome to Ginge and Sea. I'm Greg Holder, and today we're gonna to be talking about one of the shark's most incredible senses, their electroreception. So let's dive straight in. The shark's electroception is without doubt one of the coolest and most supernatural senses that they have. But what actually is electroreception? Well, this is the ability of sharks to actually sense electrical currents in the water. And they can in fact sense electrical currents as small as one nanovolt of electricity, which is absolutely tiny. But these very tiny electrical currents are given off by every living animal through our muscle contractions, and in particular, our heart contractions. So in fact, sharks can actually sense the heartbeat of their prey in the water. And electrical currents are in fact given off by some other inanimate objects as well. And in fact, blood gives off a small electrical current because it is so full of electrolytes. Now, how far away can sharks sense that electrical activity of their prey? Well, it seems to be anything under a meter, possibly as small as a meter and a half, they actually get to start sensing these electrical currents. So they will use their other senses, such as their hearing, their sight, or their smell, which are senses I've talked about in previous videos, and I'll put the playlist up here. They will use those other senses to locate prey from further away. But once they get really close to the prey within about a meter, their electroreception will take over and they will use that as their primary sense to identify where their prey is and hone, on it, hone in on it and catch it. Now it's thought that sharks also use this electroreception to detect the electrical currents of the Earth's magnetic field, which allows them to do long distance migrations across oceans with very minimal landmarks and any other way to navigate. So how do sharks actually sense electricity. What they have is they have these tiny pores on their skin called ampullae of Lorenzini. And behind these pores are very small uh, jelly-filled sacs which conduct electricity. And these ampullae of Lorenzini are each connected to an individual nerve which will send a message to the brain of the electrical activity that they have sensed. The ampullae of Lorenzini are usually spread out across the underside of the snout, around the mouth and the jaws, and even down onto the belly for certain species and also for a lot of ray species, because rays also possess this ability to sense electricity. So how do we actually know that sharks can detect electricity? So this was actually first discovered by a scientist called Adrianus Kalmin. I think I'm pronouncing that right, it's got a silent J in it. But in the 60s, he did a pioneering experiment which really proved that sharks use electrical currents to detect and hunt their prey. And we're gonna talk about that experiment now. So Kalman studied the behavior of two different species of elasmobranch, so the small spotted cat shark and the thornback ray. And he studied their difference in behavior in different conditions on a European flounder. And he put these two species with the European flounder in a large tank and gave them different conditions in order to identify what senses they were using to hunt. So the first scenario that these species were put in was the flounder buried underneath the substrate of sand. Now, once these species were stimulated by a few small drops of whiting juice, both species found the flounder. Once they were within 15 centimeters of it, they turned, removed the substrate from on top of the flounder and then ate it. The second scenario was the flounder was then placed in an agar chamber, which blocks out any optical, chemical, or mechanical stimulus. So the sharks wouldn't be able to see, hear, or smell the flounder, but the special thing about an agar chamber is it allows electrical currents to travel through it. So in this scenario, both the ray and the shark still located the prey once they came within about 15 centimeters of it and acted in very much a similar way of removing the substrate from on top of the agar chamber. The third situation, the flounder in the agar chamber was replaced by chunks of whiting, which meant that there was much less electrical activity coming from the chamber. Interestingly, in this situation, the shark and the ray both went to the outgoing tube of the agar chamber. So this was a tube 
attached to the agar chamber to allow some water flow. So the end of the outgoing tube was where some of the smell would be coming from the whiting um, chunks. So therefore, instead of going directly for the agar chamber, which now just had fish chunks in it and therefore no electrical activity, they eventually found the smell source, which was actually at the end of the outgoing tube. The fourth scenario that the scientists put these species in was to check if the sharks were using a vibrational sense to locate the prey. So the agar chamber was wrapped with plastic to stop any electrical current escaping the chamber and the flounder was put back in the chamber. In this situation, the elasmobranchs, both the shark and the ray, were not able to locate the prey at all. So this shows that once the agar chamber was wrapped in plastic, stopping the electricity to travel through, these species could not identify the prey species, even though in a previous experiment without the plastic, they were able to identify this prey species through the agar chamber. And finally, even though the results strongly suggested that sharks were using electroception for prey location, Kalman performed two more scenarios using electrodes, generating one hertz of current hid under the substrate. Not only did the both shark and ray locate the electrodes under the substrate in a similar way to the, how they located the flounder by removing the substrate, but they even ignored chunks of whiting that were left on top of the substrate. So this shows that once they come in close quarters, their electroreception sense actually overrides other senses such as smell or even sight in order to find prey. So they actually preferred the electrical current coming from an electrode than the whiting chunks that were sitting on the sand. So that is some pretty amazing science there to show you how they worked out that sharks without doubt use electricity as their main function of finding prey once they get into that really short distance. So let's just finish up with a pretty cool fact. So quite often sharks are seen to show a lot of interest in divers cameras, more so even than they show in the divers. Now, why is this? Cameras give off quite large electrical currents, particularly the flashes or strobes as they're known in underwater photography, they give off a huge amount of electricity when they produce this large amount of light for the flash for a camera. They're also much more similar size to the prey of most species that you're gonna be diving with. So as the shark approaches the diver from a longer distance away, just out of curiosity, they're gonna get this sudden boost of electrical activity hitting their ampullae of Lorenzini as they approach. And so they're gonna be encouraged to come in a little bit closer. And if the diver doesn't react to the approach or even backs off a little bit from the shark, they'll be encouraged even more to come in closer and maybe even eventually take a bit of a test bite of the camera. So this is what causes photos like this to occur. Not an aggressive attack on the diver, but in fact, an investigatory bite on a camera that is letting off a lot of activity, giving the impression that it is a small living animal and possible prey source for the shark. I hope you guys enjoyed today's talk on electroreception, such a cool sense. If you want to learn more about the other senses, then do check out my playlist. You can learn about hearing, sight and smell of sharks and how they use all these senses differently in order to become the top and most successful predator in the oceans. Thank you so much for joining today, guys. If this is your first video, then do consider subscribing on the button below and click that little bell button so you don't miss any of my new videos. But thanks again for joining. Hope you're all really healthy and well, and I will see you at the next one.